Good morning. Uh, welcome. My name is Desiree Smith and I'm Chief Information Officer in the Department of Information and Public, in, uh, Public Relations. And I'm on the communications team for the NEOC, the National Emergency Operations Committee. And uh, this morning we have a very important press conference um, with the joint leaders of the NEOC because um, this press conference is for the purpose of advising the public, the BBI public, about the approach of Hurricane Maria. So if we're ready, and I think we are, um, we have the joint leaders being um, His Excellency the Governor Augustus Jasper, we have the Premier of the Virgin Islands, Dr. The Honorable D. Orlando Smith, and we have the Director of the Department of Disaster Management, Ms. Charlene Dabrio. And uh, we'll start with an opening statement from the Premier, please. Thank you, Desiree. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the Virgin Islands. It was my hope that today government would have a chance to provide a comprehensive report on our actions to support re relief efforts since the passage of Hurricane Irma on September 6th. However, more pressing matters emerged, and that is the recently formed Hurricane Maria. I wanted to take the opportunity of a planned press conference to implore each resident of the Virgin Islands to finalize any preparedness measures for the passage of Hurricane Maria which is expected to pass close to the Virgin Islands Tuesday evening into Wednesday. As of 8 a.m. this morning, the Virgin Islands is on a hurricane watch, and we'll feel some effects from the passage of Hurricane Maria. While Hurricane Maria may not be as strong as Hurricane Irma, thank God, our present reality is also very different. Effects such as potential flooding and high winds that can turn debris into dangerous projectiles can have a greater and more treacherous impact for us. Many residents are still displaced, homes are not fully secured, and our natural protections have had severe damage due to the passage of Hurricane Irma. Our islands are extremely vulnerable right now, and I urge everyone to finalize their plans to be indoors for tonight's curfew and remain there until an oracle is given by the National Emergency Operations Center. You can stay updated on the passage of the hurricane via the Department of Disaster Management's Facebook page or by listening to the radio. For the remainder of the today, I urge communities to organize and assist the Department of Waste Management in cleaning up as much of the debris as possible. Many homes are exposed and flying debris can cause greater damage to property and individuals. I also ask the communities to look out for neighbors that might be elderly and need assistance or those whose homes may have been severely damaged. If you are uncertain that you'll be safe in your home, I strongly encourage you to get to a shelter where you and your family will be secure. In the territory, we still have with us additional enforcement support to ensure the safety of all residents. My government stands united with the Governor and the Commissioner of Police in supporting the maintenance of a law and abiding in our society. We will not tolerate any adverse behavior to a usual peaceful way of life in the Virgin Islands, particularly in a time such as this. I'd like to extend gratitude to the many individuals, organizations, agencies, and governments that have come forward in support of the Virgin Islands during this very challenging time and what will prove to be one of the most defining moments of our history. It is comforting to know that we are not alone. It is also comforting to know that the people of the Virgin Islands remain vigilant and resilient. I also express my thanks and appreciation to the staff and volunteers of the National Emergency Operating Center for their hard work. They themselves have experienced losses, yet they are here daily coordinating recovery efforts. I must also thank the many other public servants from the Department of Waste Management, Public Works, Water and Sewage, BV Electricity Corporation, and a host of other government agencies and volunteers who are working around the clock. Again, on behalf of the people of the Virgin Islands, I thank you. I must ask that you continue as we all work to get our islands back to normalcy. Particularly for our sister islands of Anagada, Virgin Gordon, Justin Dyke, I thank the many private businesses and local organizers that have spearheaded in relief efforts on those islands. Your work has made a world of difference to residents on those islands. Finally, Virgin Islanders and residents, I know that these past few weeks have been extremely stressful. The devastation caused by Irma has left many residents wondering how they will move forward and rebuild their lives. My promise to you is that my government will be right there with you as we all pick up the pieces one day at a time. Right now, we do need you to act swiftly 
Adhere to information provided by a National Emergency Operations Center, and we all will get through this together. Following the passage of Hurricane Maria, my government will be providing the territory with a full update on the response and recovery efforts. In the meantime, I again urge you to stay vigilant, prepare for the passage of Hurricane Maria, and let us band together as a community and remain BVI strong. Thank you very much, and um, thank you, Premier, uh, for uh, your important messages. And also, I reiterate the huge thanks to uh, all of the staff at the NEOC, all in public services, and all in the communities who have been helping us uh, uh, restore and rebuild this territory um, over the last uh, challenging days. My five, I have five key points which build on the Premier's uh, statement. Uh, and then I'll ask the di director to also give us an update on the weather so people are, are clear on the latest. The key points which the Premier touched on, but are really important that people take this, take this seriously now, is that the Premier and I, in discussion with Cabinet, have switched our focus to preparation now for the next few days, so we are ready for Hurricane Maria. We will bounce back quickly with recovery, and we will keep going with recovery uh, to restore this territory to the fantastic position it was in before. But for now, the communities must prepare. Prepare in terms of safe shelter. Prepare in terms of helping to clear the guts. We expect rainfall, and we expect flooding. Prepare and help to get debris off the streets. Debris will become flying missiles, and we need to prepare for that. I've extended the curfew in consultation with the Premier and with the Cabinet from 6pm tonight, Monday, until the hurricane all clear. That is done to allow public works vehicles to quickly get debris off the streets. Please help us in that. Get the debris collected, but stay off the streets to allow public work vehicles to clear it. That is for your safety uh, as we approach uh, um, Hurricane Maria. And finally, I want to give a message of reassurance. Whilst we prepare, I'm also reassured that we have pre-positioned both security uh, forces and also our supplies so that we can bounce back very quickly. The Premier and I will be focusing on an immediate bounce back and recovery after this storm places. I'm incredibly pleased that the British military have stayed on the island. They will be here. They will be working under the authority of the BVI police and the police commissioner to make sure that we have security uh, or no security concerns uh, after the passing of Hurricane Maria. We also have United Kingdom police officers supporting the BVI police uh, on the ground. They have stayed, and I'm also hugely grateful to our friends uh, in, in the Cayman uh, Islands for leaving their Caymanian police here as well to support us. We will bounce back quickly, but the key message at the moment is that people need to prepare have reassurance that the recovery will start immediately, that the hurricane watch is over, but prepare now. Make sure that you're in safe shelter. Make sure you're clearing up debris. This is the moment for the fantastic community spirit that I have seen across all of the territory that I've, I've been uh, visiting over the last few, uh, few weeks. This is the moment for that community spirit to rise to its utmost, help us get stuff off the streets, help public works, and protect your neighbour and protect yourself. We will quickly move to recovery again and rebuilding this fantastic territory with the Premier and with all of Cabinet. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I bring you the latest, which was issued at 9 o'clock. Um, unfortunately, this will not be, not be coming out on the National Hurricane page until 11. But um, Maria is now a Category 3. Uh, the winds are 115 miles per hour. The system is moving west-northwest, and the forecasters have indicated that it still has time to intensify before it gets to us. Uh, this new information is as a result of the Hurricane Hunter that went in this morning and was able to verify the winds within it. So the center of Maria is actually supposed to pass just south of us. The closest point of approach will be about 65 miles away from us. And the center will pass around three, around 5.30 a.m. on Wednesday. What that means is from Tuesday afternoon, we will start getting the tropical depression winds coming in like around 3, 4 o'clock, and that will continue to escalate until the eye passes. 
uh, what we want people to understand is when you do see that calm, it's not an opportunity for you to go outside. Uh, the worst of the storm will be coming. So we want individuals to remain indoors. And that's one of the reasons why the governor and premier have uh, extended the curfew. So in terms of what Maria is bringing, we've been looking at the impacts on the other Caribbean islands and we've discovered that Maria is going to be a very wet system. It's bringing a lot of rain with it. Um, it's considering that all our vegetation has been removed. The risk of flash flooding is much, much greater. Uh, the hurricane is going to be bringing with it high winds, heavy rains and, and storm surge. So persons who are living in high elevations, low lying areas or those who are close to guts, we're urging you now to consider moving to some area that is much safer. We will be walking through some of the high risk communities today to speak with individuals in those areas to try to encourage them to take action now. The forecasters are estimating 6 to 12 inches of rain with 20 inches in isolated areas. So those areas that are particularly vulnerable, we can have significant precipitation in those areas. Uh, we are going to ramp up most of our, our preparations for today. The NEOC is focused on the key priority areas which the governor mentioned. That is making sure that the guts are clean and making sure that homes are secured. And I believe the governor will elaborate a bit more on the reasons for the curfew, which are very important to get us to that state of preparation. Thank you very much, Madam Director. Um, all statements made by the joint leaders of the NEOC. So um, we will open the floor to the media. And uh, for your questions, please identify yourself and your organization. Good morning, Zan Lewis, Zebiver Radio. Premier, we just experienced Omo. What you have learned, you and the government learned from Omo that have caused you to now put in effect for um, Hurricane Maria as it approaches? What lessons you would have learned? Actually, the, um, we have learned some lessons in that. Um, we can't uh, take climate change for you know for granted. It's something that is real, because this uh, the Irma, hurricane Irma is uh, perhaps the strongest hurricane we've seen in in the region. Certainly that I never heard about, right? And uh, what we've noticed recently, we've had the flooding just a few weeks ago, which was the most severe flooding we had again in in, in recent history in the BVI. Then Hurricane Irma, and now we had another hurricane. So. The, this hurricane season is really something that is very serious for us, and so we've got to be as prepared as we can be. The challenge for us now as a community is that, um, is that after the passage of Hurricane uh, Irma, many homes have been damaged, right? And therefore, we are not as resistant, if you wish, as um, we were before uh, the passage of Hurricane Maria. And as I walked through some of the districts yesterday, I was in Huntum's Gut yesterday, for example. They are, um, in so many roofs are gone, right? And people still have to find shelter. And so therefore, we have to make sure that there are sufficient shelters open for persons to be able to find shelter during this time, if this hurricane really comes. And one of the main places we are concentrating on right now is the multi-sports complex. It's a large space. It's a very strong building, had slight damage, which had been prepared today. And so that will uh, serve as one of our primary shelters, along with the other shelters which have been used before. Premier, the government has taken a decision to shut down the town, right? This was not taken um, during the time of Hurricane Oma. A number of things happened as a result of Hurricane Oma. There was a lot of looting, mm -hmm. right? Will it be correct to say, sir, mm -hmm. that the government has taken the decision now to shut down the town to avoid any excess looting if it becomes necessary during Maria, and also in light of a recent statement or comment made by the Director of Disaster Management prior to Irma about a day or so, advising the authorities to shut down the town, but that did not happen. Will I be correct to say that? Not really. The reality is that after the passage of Hurricane Irma, there's been a lot of debris on the road. There's been a lot of galvanized and trees and all sorts of things, which can be in any future hurricane which, is, which could be coming, 
which can be basically serious, dangerous missiles that can damage people and for their damage house and whatnot. That is the most important reason. We shut down the town so that the Department of Waste Management, Public Works, Ministry of Communications can really focus on the job of removing these debris and missiles and so from, from, from the city, from the, from the country. And what we want, we want the, all the citizens of the BVI to assist in this process. We want everybody to get out on the streets and help to remove all these dangerous, particular governors. These governors could be very dangerous for people, and this is why people have to keep off the streets as well during that time. Right? One of the important reasons is that um, in that cleanup, we got to clear those guts. You know, we did a good, we had, we had them all cleared after, <laughs> after the floods, but they're all blocked again. Matter of fact, if you were to go to a low estate, they got there between low estate and botanic gardens, completely blocked, and there's a whole trailer in that gut by the bridge, right? That is the essential reason. Law and order must, be, must, con uh, must continue, and the officers of the, and, uh, from the, the UK and the other Caribbean countries and the army, they're here. But do you, if you recall, after they were deployed after Irma, law and order was quickly restored. So that was not the primary reason for shutting down right now. Kathy Richards, JTV News. Uh, Premier, uh, Ms. Abreu and uh, Governor, uh, given the present situation, uh, persons are here live querying a lot about shelters. Yes, you mentioned the multipurpose complex is going to be open now as a, a big space, but what about the others? Are they filled to capacity? Can they take more persons at this stage? Uh, with regards to shelters, what we've been doing, shelter, the shelters that were open, uh, the 11 shelters that we had um, just a few days ago that we were operating, those are still in place. What we're doing today is that we're going to every single one of those facilities to check the structure, the public health conditions, the conditions of individuals in those shelters. If we need to make a decision to move them to other safer locations, that decision will be made today. So the, the final listing of the shelters to support Maria's response will be issued this afternoon. But we needed to make sure that we had an opportunity to check to make sure that people were safe, children are safe in the shelter, the structures are safe, and for us to make a determination whether we should leave individuals in those buildings. Uh, can you speak to the elderly and other persons who are like on dialysis if there are arrangements to have them stay for the period at the People's Hospital for their uh, health and security safe? The so health disaster uh, coordinator has been working directly with the public health system to identify those individuals and ensure that their medication is, is getting to them. Uh, we had a large supply of insulin that came in yesterday from PAHO. It's a thousand vials that came in of insulin. We had a thousand vials of tetanus. The entire public health system has been activated and they're focusing on individuals in not only in shelters but individuals in critical areas that will need to have their medication administered. Peter Green Coombs, JTV, following up on the curfew issue. The prior curfew, a lot of persons ignored the window of the curfew. So this time around with the extension, what's the plan to enforce the curfew so persons abide by it? Yes, thank you. Um, I'll answer this. I mean, the, the bigger message is we're asking for the community to help. This is a time where people need to prepare and they need to help us prepare. So I'm asking every single resident to support volunteering to help clear up, clear the guts, clear debris, support in getting into safe shelter and prepare themselves, and also help by allowing public works to, to, to get through quickly to help us move material off the streets. So the first thing is this is an individual responsibility of everybody out there to help this territory at the moment. We do now have a lot of police officers in the territory, backed up by the military. They will be out enforcing the curfew as and when required but, but I urge people to support our efforts and to support the preparations and abide by the curfew. Vivian Smith, uh, BVR News. Um, back to the, the health issue firstly, um, what plans are being put in place because um, I know uh, for example Sir Richard Branson had said on his um, website that you know he was he expressed concerns about um, disease outbreaks you know such as cholera that sort of thing which is expected um, which can happen in disasters like these uh, 
what preparations are being in place, uh, are being put in place right now to, um, to safeguard against diseases such as those? Yeah. We, we do have a functioning sewage system. There were some issues which are being worked on. So once that is functioning, there will be no sewage on the street, which is very important. So right? to be clear, for, for the avoidance of doubt, yeah. we have nothing to worry about in terms of disease-wise. No, I didn't say that. I said that we do have a functioning sewage system. Mm -hmm. So the chances of uh, disease like cholera spreading is, is very, very slight. Right? We do have um, a process uh, where the the people from the health authority, the Ministry of Health, will go around and do fogging when necessary. And we are urging all members of the community to make sure there's no collection of water around their homes. So this is a message to everybody. So you must go around and check your homes, make sure that all the waste containers are emptied so no water collects because that breeds mosquitoes, mosquitoes can cause various diseases, right? Um, but if the community were to cooperate and do that, I think we should be fairly well. Uh, okay. during, during a recent meeting with the business community, um, you had said you were projecting to have, you know, cruise passengers back in. Around about November, uh, uh, Mr. Walwyn also said, you know, he hopes to have school open within a month and a half. Do you imagine with the passage of um, Maria, we make those timelines? At least I see you shaking your head, so at least where the school is concerned. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, in, in, it's interesting you said um, wrong about November. We're hoping mm -hmm. that we'll be able to open for business. In fact, we open for business now, right? I'm urging a few restaurants have started open, a few businesses have started open. In fact, I passed by Panchi yesterday. And I was going to buy a chicken leg, but it was taking too long. <laughs> I had a meeting with the governor, so I couldn't have my chicken leg, right? But that is good. That's a good sign that the community is returning to normal. And if you look at the streets in, 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 in the capital now, they look a lot better than they looked a few days ago, right? So things are happening. The community is getting together. We're getting back to normal, right? And once we continue in that process, we should be, we should be okay. Premier, Just a matter of time. Sorry, yeah. Premier, uh, we have... Uh, Mike Connolly here live is asking what are the plans to keep the persons on the sister islands informed as those on a Tertola because of the limited communications that the, those persons over there can access. But we actually have uh, Trevor Grant and um, Sharon Flaxmars who've been in direct contact with us. Uh, we've been communicating all the messages through them and they're relaying that over to the community. The British telecommunications um, officials were here and they've, they have a VSAT system to set up in Virgin Gorda and that would have been done today but with the passage of Maria obviously we need to protect those, those resources. Information is getting into Virgin Gorda. We are making sure that they are able to get the updates and this is being done through the committee. So there is a desk here at the NEOC that's focusing on getting information over to the sister islands. So okay. what about Anigata, Yes, Van Dyke? Anigata, we have direct contact with the fire officer there and the district officer, so information is getting through to them as well. We are making every effort that we can using all forms of media to get information out to the public. That is very important for us and that has been priority for today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the governor. Just, just to add on, on, on that, the sister islands are as important as any other part uh, of the territory. And the residents there should be reassured every single day. Um, the Premier and I meet with other cabinet members as well as with district representatives. And we work through the situation in the sister islands uh, across all of them uh, to ensure that all the preparations as well as the response is as effective there as it is anywhere else in the territory. I'm hugely grateful that uh, the United Kingdom government has sent us satellite phones which we distributed out to keep communications going but that's been one of our, as people know, one of our major difficulties is communicating when lots of the networks went down. Uh, we now have radio back up um, and the Premier and I are doing morning and evening statements and we urge people to listen into those. That's where we can communicate key messages out to communities. Governor, the question was asked a while ago as regards to curfew and um, you said the most important thing is for the community to help, right? And, um, and the security is in place. It seems though 
I don't think the security people are harsh enough up front. I don't think they are harsh enough up front in relation to the current curfew where you said 6 to 9 a.m. The question now, what are you going to do to ensure that these persons who insisted despite your pleas to stay home, who continue to break the curfew to ensure that they remain off the streets? I don't think you all have been harsh enough because despite um, that the gas lines are filled 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning, nothing is being done. How are you? and the security will not stop that. Yes, so as I said earlier, the key thing is actually we ask for the public to, to help on it. There are a lot of police and a lot of military out there. They are stopping cars, they are checking cars. I get a daily report, as does the Premier and the rest of Cabinet, from the Police Commissioner who gives us an update on the security. He's been telling me that actually people, the, the levels of, of, of crime are reducing. It is an offence to break the curfew. The police are taking evidence of anyone who, who they believe uh, is, is committing an offence. And it goes the same for anyone committing a crime more widely. The police will prosecute and will take, take that uh, through if there is an offence uh, committed. So the message is we do have extra personnel out, people out there in terms of, of police and security forces. They will be conducting those checks. But this is an, also an individual responsibility that people need to help in this territory's time of need. Uh, and they must also assist the police uh, um, to keep these roads clear and assist public works in their operations. I believe you can Can I, um, I'd like to support what the governor just said, right? But you must also remember that um, the, we have passes for emergency workers, and there are quite a few emergency workers who you'll see on the street getting gas, etc., etc. There's also the, the persons who are cleaning the streets from the um, Solid Waste Department, etc. Mm -hmm. They work, tend to work at night and early mornings, uh, and that, so we allow that to happen. And then there are the people who have actually begun to repair houses put on roofs, etc., especially in the incoming hurricane. They too have had to have to be able to get to work early, like seven o'clock and so. And so we have to get those permission as well. So while there's maybe quite you see quite a lot of activity, much of that is regulated activity, activity which we expect and which must happen in order for the streets to be clean and the roofs to be fixed and so forth. Mr Governor, I wanted to go back to the issue of uh, the incoming Hurricane. Um, what is being done um, to one protect and also secure um, pre um, those at Her Majesty's prison? Yes, uh, good question. So, as you know, the prison uh, was breached earlier uh, after Hurricane Irma. Uh, I was very pleased that we, um, under the operation of the BVI police, working with the prison authorities and with the support of um, UK police, Caymanian police, and um, military we've got control of the prison. The prison is secure. Prisoners are in the prison. They will be locked in, in the prison. Cells will be locked down. They will be controlled during the, during the uh, uh, Hurricane Maria. I've also, in working with Minister Walwyn, we've agreed that we're putting extra military into the prison as well, so British military personnel will be there to help secure the prison. So I have confidence that the prison will, will be, uh, stay a, a secure place during this period. What of their safety um, with the, the, the hurricane coming? Um, how's the, the, the structure looking right now? So I've been assured, in it and Minister Warwin and I have discussed uh, this, we're confident of the, of the structure of the prison. We're confident that, that managed with the right security and the right routine at the prison, that it will stay um, intact, both for the prisoners who are there, as well as the, the staff who are there keeping the prisoners uh, under control. But I have confidence and have been briefed by Minister Warwin on the plans he's put in place to make sure that the prison stays a secure location. The Governor, follow up on that just again. Any headway made since the last set of recaptures for escaped prisoners? Uh, yes, the police are, are capturing more and putting more back in all the time. Uh, we are now over, uh, I haven't got the exact number with me, but we are over uh, 100 and uh, uh, over 100 prisoners have been put back in, including the most dangerous prisoners that we were worried about. So they have been captured and have been put back in to the prison and under now a very secure guard at the prison, supported by the British military as well. What was the count um, of escapees altogether? 
Um, well, we, the prison was breached. So what happened was uh, some prisoners left, but actually were abiding and reporting back every day. Uh, some actually were helping to rebuild the prison and were taking shelter there themselves. They were going back, preparing their own home. Mm -hmm. Some of the prisoners used the opportunity to get out and um, cause problems in the community. I'm very pleased that we've got the worst of those and got them back into the prison. So there's a bit of a mixture in terms of you know the prisoners of, of how many sort of stayed and actually you know abided by the prison routine and those who who uh, used the opportunity to get into the community. That's what we've been focusing on with the police commissioner and the prison authorities and the Mini and Minister Warwin to make sure that we've got people back into prison and the prison secure um, uh, again. And each day we are getting more of those prisoners back into um, the prison. I know there are more pressing matters at hand regarding securing the territory and recovery, but regarding some of these prisoners, especially those who stayed back to assist prison officials with yes. whatever was needed on hand there, and those who assisted in the community even though they were on the outside, yes. any plans to reward them in any way or give consideration for that? Yes, no, that's a discussion that Minister Warwin and the Premier and I uh, have discussed. Uh, an important point here that we may be under a state of emergency but we have our functioning government we have the right processes so any any prisoner in normal days who's done good behavior or support recommendations go from the prison superintendent to the parole board or separately to the to the commission for prerogative of royal mercy which i oversee those procedures stay there's no difference to those the prison superintendent i will be expecting to recommend people to those uh, to those two panels and then we will take decisions on the back of that based on the proper advice. But there's a very important message at the heart of that actually which is worth explaining. I in consultation with the Premier declared a state of emergency because we needed to take and act very quickly on a range of issues. But that does not mean that government has been suspended in any way or that normal procedures and processes are absent. We are working through existing structures, we're putting in all of the checks we would normally have, all of the procedures and ministerial government is the place where things are, are moving. So on the issue of schools that we asked about earlier, Minister Warwin is working up a plan. On the issue of the prison, it's an area where, where uh, again, the minister is working with me, with the support of the British military to ensure we have that. On recovery, the Premier is, is pushing forward areas. All of those things remain. The state of emergency and the ability it gives me uh, is about working f with the Premier and Cabinet together to make sure that we, we do everything we can and everything we need to do in this territory to get our, us back on our feet. Thinking ahead of uh, recovery, mm. um, it was said that an additional that 640 shelter kits had arrived in the, the, uh, um, in the territory recently. It seems to be in very high demand, you know, people are asking more and more about yes. it. Um, are there plans for more, to even more to come in? Yes, so um, it's, and I'll ask the director to talk more because uh, the director is in charge of the supply and the distribution. That's a very important point, both in terms of coordinating the international uh, aid and, and private and voluntary aid that's coming in, and then coordinating that out. We have had shelter kits coming through. I'll be honest, we've had challenges in terms of getting all of the distribution through to the level that we, we need and getting that out. We've been challenged in communications, we've been challenged with uh, the airport and you know and getting that back up and running which which has been huge progress on getting the ports open which again there's been huge progress on but I won't I won't hide any of the challenges it has been very challenging but we now have uh, a strong distribution system which the director can talk through more I also am speaking every single day to to uh, the United Kingdom and I know the director and premier are speaking to other authorities in the region and internationally to make sure that we have supplies coming through quickly. The United Kingdom itself I know has already pre-positioned further supplies in the region so that quickly as soon as ports or, or, or the airport reopens we can get those supplies uh, flooding through. We have a huge task ahead of us but I've got confidence that the director has, has got the systems established so we can support people quickly after Hurricane Maria passes. Director. Yes, we, we've, we've, we had a, prior to the event over a thousand um, what do you call kits, tarps, really, um, in our warehouse, and all of those have been distributed. The 640 that came in, that has gone out as well. We did get some additional tarps yesterday, but one of the concerns we want to say to the public is putting tarps on with an approaching mm -hmm. system may not be a wise thing. Mm -hmm. So you may want to look at more trying to secure whatever plywood you can if you're going to do any physical work to the structures. Um, the tarps 
we, we, as the governor indicated, there have been challenges with getting supplies in because of the problems we're having with the airport. But as we get the supplies in, they're being distributed. The distribution system is now in effect. Uh, there are distribution points in all districts, and persons can actually go within their districts to obtain the supplies that they need, food, water, uh, tents, hygiene kits, and so forth. In addition to that, Rotary also brought in shelter boxes yesterday. Those are being distributed, and they're targeting those individuals who really have no home but can put those kits in places that will be secure because we do not want tents outdoors with this approaching storm. We do not want people to have loose tarpaulings flying. Um, it's just not going to be productive for them. So that system is in place. We've also been in touch with Sedema. There is stocks in Antigua that we're hoping to access with additional tents. Um, but everything is really on hold now with this approaching storm, and we're hoping that we can get whatever we have in country now. We had eight containers coming in last night. The effort today is to try to distribute all of that prior to uh, Maria impacting on us. You made mention of... Can, can you I'd just like to follow up on, uh, on what our um, governor and uh, Mr. Abris said. The, I want to essentially um, emphasize that the... Uh, Partners in the region have been very um, uh, as assisting us. Very, they've been coming forward in the assistance with BVI. We've had delegations from Jamaica, from Guyana, from St. Vincent, from St. Lucia, and other countries who've come to see what the needs are and be able to go back and determine what they'll be able to send to us. And that's important because um, it is better for them to understand what we really need in terms of food and supplies rather than send things that, uh, and th that happens in disasters, right? One, what I was very pleased yesterday when uh, I received a delegation from Puerto Rico. They call themselves the Puerto Rico Army. Mm -hmm. We used to call them the Puerto Rico Armada long ago. They're the same group who organized the um, Christmas in July in, in Virgin Gorda. They have sent uh, <coughs> about eight um, containers of, um, in fact, about 11 mm -hmm. containers of, of supplies which include food and plywood, et cetera, et cetera, and they intend to send more. They've been very supported. They've been coming here for years, and, and they're the lovely BVI, and they have been very supportive, and I was very happy to see them. They, uh, they operate in here as well as in Virgin Gorda. As we speak, they're also in Onigada helping with distribution in Virgin Gorda. Yes. Can I say, I think we have time for just one more question, because uh, mm -hmm. we need to get on with Ms. our Ms. you work. said that uh, as I'm regards sorry, the... I'm sorry, the, 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 we want to make sure that the focus is on Maria, so the final question has to be focused on Maria, so preparation. The, the, media, the, um, the media asking the question, they right. can so not tell us what the Okay, so, <laughs> so we want the public to be sensitized about Maria. The, the whatever's happening right. here, the public has been sensitized. Okay. Okay. So that's what we are doing. The urgency of time. The, you said the... The materials that are coming in, you're going to be targeting people to get people who are without homes. Most of the people are without homes. How are you going to determine who you're going to give it to? You're going to go district by district. Um, how are you going to determine um, who you're going to give it to? Because many of them are without homes. Yes, I, everyone has been affected. We understand that. But there's surveys that have been carried out uh, we have an idea district by district the individuals who have not been able to access the supplies or been able to access as much as they need we're looking at the elderly people with physical challenges individuals with children people who have nowhere to go individuals who are in the shelters that data is being collected now and is being analyzed so yes the system will allow for everyone to get but we also need to make sure that those vulnerable individuals are, are the aid is reaching them as well our team um that's one, a, yes. That's uh, the we final question. That's the final question. Thank you very much Thank you. Uh, for coming. Uh, we thank you very much for coming. And we're going to wrap up and ask, uh, thank the, the joint committee, the joint members of the committee for taking this time this morning as work has to go on. Um, this, this is very important for these leaders to now assume their activities in behalf of relief that's been taking place and um, preparations for Maria that is, that is right up, upon us. Thank you very much. Thank you, media, for coming, and have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much.